Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McBoy. And I'm Scott Ramph. And if, if you guys could tell by that generic music, there's no ASAP today. It is Columbus Day or yeah. um, Missoula. Indigenous in, People's Day in Missoula. In Missoula. In yes, Missoula. in Missoula it is. Indigenous People's Day. So ASAP has the morning off, so you just are stuck with Scott and I yes. as your relief. That's, okay. not, that's not a good phrase. You're, we're we're going to usher you guys into a nice, wonderful week. It will. Yeah, this is going to be a great show. We've got our sports segment with Colin Kempson later on. We've got some news stories. We've got community events. But we're going to kick off, as always, with weather. Yes, it is currently 50 degrees. And it's not going to change for much from that except for, um, you know, more rain, less rain, just rain all Ooh. around, rain, rain. Wednesday, areas frost. We can yeah. see some frost. And then, of course, you know... Um, Pretty much, uh, it's going to be clear Wednesday, and then back to rainy Thursday. So yeah, it's you know, it's fall now. It's definitely. It's we're about to be halfway through October, which is kind of crazy. That on Friday will be mm -hmm. October fourteenth. It seems like we're going through our annual pre uh, precipitation just before winter starts. So I don't know, like if we'll see these kind of precipitation percentage chance during the winter well i hear that it's supposed to be like a kind of like a mild start off to the winter and then it's going to be a super intense and hit us with a bunch of snow yeah but you can find out more information right. about that by going to nationalweatherservice.gov but of course if you want to find out more information you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice to meet you right out twice um you can like our on our facebook page you can follow us on twitter at Wake up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter page. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You guys can like us on our Facebook page and find out more information. Just check us out on MCAT.org. Yes, and of course, this Wednesday is our orientation. So if any of you like um, television and want to make your own television program, uh, you can. And that's uh, every uh, second Wednesday of the month at 530 here at MCAT 500 North Higgins Street 105. And yeah, you can call ahead and just say, hey, um, I want to be part of MCAT and we'll get you situated. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, uh, in Missoula, uh, they finally found out the whole uh, Missoula clown hoax. It's true, yes. So the cops finally found out who uh, was posting those clown threats, and it was just a 15-year-old kid. Yep. And they interviewed him, and he admitted to it, but, you know, they haven't released his name because he's a minor, so they probably won't. Yep. But it's just very, very silly. But some of our, uh, like... Kids that we know in high yeah, school. Yeah, some of the some of our teens' uh, uh, coworkers, Neil, <laughs> uh, who works here as well, he was telling me that uh, it wasn't like the person who did it was like you know like it, it, the person's name was Zootown Clown, and then there's um, another name he goes by is like the Zootown Kid, and it, and it wasn't really hard for the police to track connect this the person, dots, <laughs> track this person down. Those crazy fifteen year olds. Yeah. But it's always a bragging thing. Like, always. It's always like, I want attention. Yeah, I'm going to And they always threats. get hot. And of course, um, <laughs> they did, they, the parents let them release a comment or something like that, but um, I guess they they didn't um, show it because I guess it wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They if they allowed him to be interviewed, but because he's a minor, I don't think they would name him or say any of his comments in the newspaper. Yeah. But I do have some new stuff for you guys today. So, of course, the debates were last night. And so if you didn't watch it, I've got good uh, six good takeaways from NBC.com about the debate. So, of course, uh, it started off with those lewd remarks that Donald Trump made about those women on that sex tape about sexual harassment, or not on the sex tape, <laughs> tape about sexual harassment. Um, and so, of course, they directly asked him about that, and he just said that he never committed any of those acts, but it was just talker room, that it was just locker talk. But before the debate, he held a very tense press press conference with the four women who have accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault, um, which is kind of just like a, he was very desperate it seemed like, so that was kind of like a desperate defense. Um, and so he did that, so then during that, Clinton, I guess, tried to connect all the dots, so she claimed that Trump was not fit to be president, and that you could tell he wasn't fit to be president by those lewd remarks, as well as some other things that he has done. Um, and so, uh, and then, Trump, of course, once again, uh, mentioned Clinton's email scandals. In the first debate, he didn't really have like too much dirt on her. It didn't seem like his research was done that well to uh, really attack her in a political manner. He just interrupted her a lot. And so this time, he actually got some dirt on her and he said more <laughs> about the email scandals. Um, and she responded saying that her email server was a mistake and she takes responsibility um, and that she's not making any mix, you know, excuses. And so after 
after she made her points, she continued to litigate the situation, which I guess people can see that as um, me, her being untruthful or unconcerned. So that was a little bit interesting. Um, and then Trump definitely admitted to not paying federal taxes. When he was asked, he uh, admitted that he took advantage of a loophole that allowed him to not pay federal income tax. Um, and so when they asked him, he said, of course. So that we know about that. Um, and then Donald Trump broke with his own running mate on Syria, which I thought was very interesting. They uh, asked him about uh, Russia and threatening the Amer Russia being a threat and uh, attacking Syria, and if America was going to take that, America was going to take um, force, you know, use military force, uh, and that's what uh, Donald Trump's running mate said. But Donald Trump was like, oh, I haven't talked to him and I strongly disagree, therefore backing Russia. So he said that he hadn't talked to his vice president and then also uh, didn't agree with him. So that's, you know, you've got to kind of be unified if you're going to run for presidency. Um, and then Donald Trump continued to defend Russia and he um, insisted that they're bombing ISIS, which the international community does not believe. So he continued to defend Russia, um, but both candidates were asked for their strategy after the war-torn nation, about the war-torn nation. And Clinton said she would continue what the U.S. is currently doing, special forces stationed in the ground, training re rebels and counterintelligence missions. And then Donald Trump said that he wanted to do something secret. So that's kind of, yeah, so that was kind of the uh, debate and all on the topics. You guys can find that out on NBC.com. But uh, the debate is ridiculous, and it's kind of neg you know it just kind of brings everyone down. No. So I have some funny things to tell you guys. But also of course, about the while debate. people were watching the debate, no one really even cared about the debate. They they cared more about this one guy. Oh yeah, debate. yeah. So this is really really funny. So there's a guy that asked a question. The debate was like a town hall style, and this man asked a question. He asked a great question. His question was. What steps will your energy policy take to meet our energy needs while at the same time remaining environmentally friendly and minimizing job layoffs? But the one thing about him was that he looked very, very similar to a, a character in Toy Story, the second movie. So if you guys take a look over here, to, uh, Ken Bone, Kenneth Bone was a bone collector, well, bone collector in Toy Story 2, but he also looks just like the guy who asked the question. And so it's just really funny that it's kind of going viral right now. Yeah. But with the facial hair and the glasses and the red shirt, it's just all too much of a great coincidence. All right, now my challenge for you at home is to determine what was the question that this man asked? Yeah. <laughs> Can you remember what he asked? Or do you, are you so infatuated with the fact that he looks exactly like the villain from Toy Story 2? I know. I thought it was a really, really funny coincidence, but he also had a great question. So it's just a win all around. And then my last thing that I want to show you guys is this really cute baby putting his face in a cake. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's just adorable. Okay, so he, he, this was his first birthday. He didn't know what to do with the cake, so he just put it in there. And then this is him before when he's all cute. And then this is him eating the cake. <laughs> Which, you know, just some days, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Or I do do that at home. But I'm excited because The Walking Dead is coming back in the next couple of weeks. Ooh. I don't know how that has anything to do with anything. So you'll be eating cake like that, yes, Scott? <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I found um, the article about uh, Ken Bone as the bone collector on Bustle, the six takeaways on NBCNews.com. And then I found the really cute baby face uh, on Trending Today, on Today.com. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I've got for you guys for this morning. Yep, but I got some... Guy, some um, um, things as well. Uh, oh, nice. I did a, a nice little short little PSA and it's about our Saturday drop and so I'm going to show you that and when we come back I'm going to um, introduce our new programming. MCAT Stop Animation uh -huh. Drop-In is back mm -hmm. and every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. kids 9 to 13 can make their own stop animated feature for only ten dollars. What's ten dollars? What are you doing? Sir, you're gonna have to leave. I'm shooting a PSA. PSA? Seems more like a commercial. Let me try to sell this thing. If you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13, you can drop them off at MCAT's Saturday Drop-In Animation. $10 for four hours of fun between 1 and 5 p.m. Excuse me, you're going to have to leave. I'm doing this thing right now. I did better. You shouldn't be doing that at all. Yeah, just a nice little <laughs> nice short Scott, little PSA. That was really funny. Your voice changer and the second guy didn't even recognize well, you. It, I was uh, like, who's that second well, guy? Well, there's an audio mixer inside there that mm -hmm. does the pitch si yep. shifter. Yep. That's what it's called, and I just used Final Cut Pro for it. Nice, and it's great. it's nice, short, and sweet. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it, it was a fun little PSA to make. Uh, mm -hmm. I made one before that 
Um, but Joel thought it was insensitive for people with long hair. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I'll show you guys later some other time. But uh, um, we do have a new programming on tonight, and it's a comedy night for the Fringe Festival, and I believe that you shot it because I could hear you laugh a couple times. Oh, no. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> but then, of course, we have uh, Circles of Support. It's part three, and, of course, this is all what's happening new tonight on MCAT tonight, starting at 7 p.m. <laughs> We got raccoons sleeping on the interstate. We got fence posts underwater. When the big bull comes, unleash your sons and lock up all of your daughters. Why? Because he's a bull. Big bull. He got horns on the sides of his skull. He'll smell her like a bull, then bell her like a bull. Better tell her that her feller ain't a man. He's a what? He's a, my God, smells like a brain. Gets hair from his chin to his angus. He's a bull. He's a devil. Hoof rock. Pedal to the metal. Come on. How did you know that you were gay? And I think I trace it back to fifth grade when we were doing the puberty talk. We got handed these little pamphlets with the diagram of what was going on down there. And all the guys were like, Cody, let's go steal the girls one and then see what's up with that. I was like, no, I'm good. Um, you don't want to use yours? I'll take that. Because um, I knew back then, I was like, I know what's up. I'm down with that. Basically, this show is a sketch show set after the apocalypse. I've got some great people. Um, one of them, her name is Danny Sather. She is um, a grad student at the theater program, so you know, she's definitely being well trained at the University of Montana for the day. <laughs> Fantastic, and they've got an amazing theater program, let me tell you. They don't, that's the joke. Um, <laughs> thank you, I appreciated that. The other day I was outside and I got, uh, I got a burn, but I, it was just, I was just standing in the shade the entire time. Yeah, yeah, that happens to me too. Uh, we're in talks with NASA right now. Now we're trying to get some sunscreen made, SPF 5000. They're gonna throw it on their astronauts before they shoot them to the sun. Yeah, I just need it to go to the grocery store. Right, right. Uh, Alex, my uh, you know, about causing harm to people and who the uh, subjects of, uh, of pornography usually are, which adds another level of, of complication. But I think the bottom line of, of what we're really trying to say is that in terms of applying conditions to, uh, for people to be in the community, because they've committed a sexual offense, doesn't mean that we're going to make a whole bunch of blanket rules based on a whole bunch of assumptions, most of which are going to be incorrect uh, for that particular individual and hope we get it right. That's sort of throwing as much onto the wall and see how much we'll stick with this guy before we send him back to jail anyway. That's wrong. That is unethical. Hi, guys. We are back and I've got some community events for your Monday and Tuesday. So up first, it is Indigenous Peoples Day, and the University of Montana is doing a lot of different things for it. I know that they had a uh, like a circle prayer this morning at 7.30 a.m., but that already happened, that was way too early. Um, and so it was an opening prayer and song at 7.30, but it does go until nine. I don't know if you guys can get there. Uh, and then from 11 to 12, they're doing a peaceful march. This will be on the north side of Van Buren Street, Footbridge, the UM Oval. Um, and then from 12 to 1, there'll be a round dance in the Oval. And then they're going to have an Indian taco sale from 12 to 4. That sounds great. And then from 2, 3, at 2, 3, and 4, will be a Payne Family Native American Center tour. And then 6, 7, 8, and 9 at the hour, they'll have hourly star showings with Destiny VL. That sounds great. So that's what's going on for Indigenous people today, day, two day at the University of Montana. They've got lots of activities. It's going to be a three day event as well. So they'll act have activities tomorrow and on Wednesday. Um, so then, other than the Indigenous Peoples Day events at the university, we have Cubicle Wars Lecture at 10 a.m. This is at the Community Dispute Reservation Center of Missoula, 1525 Liberty Lane. And what it is, it's learn and enhance your listening skills so you can become a better communicator and reduce conflict in your workplace. Huh? Yeah. Uh, at the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got Yoga for Wellness. It starts at noon. It's uh, four, $40 for four weeks, or it's just $12 if you guys want to drop in. Moscow Monday is at Montgomery Distillery, also at noon. So this is every Monday, a dollar from each cocktail sold goes to a different nonprofit in the area. They never name the nonprofit on their site, but um, the nonprofits are usually aligned with children's health and well-being, fighting hunger in our community, and environmental stewardship. We've got a couple of bridge groups. We've got our beginners brush up group at the Senior Center at one o'clock and the duplicate bridge at Garden City Bridge Club also at one o'clock. 
at Missoula Aging Services, they've got their caregiver support group at 4 p.m. Um, and that is the group meets second Monday of each month and it's for family members of an older adult of a person with a disability. Word plays at the base of the warehouse mall at four o'clock. This is uh, word games, poetic exploration, free writing, and word expansion. There's aerial yoga and mask studio that starts at five o'clock. Uh, and then we have meditation classes at six o'clock on the northeast corner of McLeod and Higgins. Um, and so, and then we also have, we've got an open mic night at Imagination Brewing Company at six o'clock. And then at the University of Montana, they have UM Physical Therapy Massage Clinic Fundraiser. It starts at six o'clock. So this benefits physical therapy students by paying for conferences for continuing education and also gives them a hands-on experience. So massages are $12 for 20 minutes and $20 for 40 minutes. You guys can call the UMPT office to sign up for a massage at 406-243-4753. And that happens all month long until October 27th. At the University of Montana, they've got an open mic night that starts at 7. It says that it's just in the UC, so I think it's downstairs. I have seen it upstairs on the third floor ballroom, so you guys can just check out and find that. Um, and then over at Shakespeare and Company, they've got a reading of Joe Anderson. His book is called Face the Music at 7 o'clock, and his, it's his account of sex, drugs, and ego in the music business. At the University of Montana, in their Gallagher Business Building, lower level, L14, there is a class put on by the Five Valley Audubon. It's more of like a lecture and discussion. And so it's uh, birds, pubs, and culture through Irish eyes. And it's the ecology of Irish birds and related culture. There's a jazz dance class for adults at the Downtown Dance Collective at 7.30. And uh, that's, I think that goes on for like a while, and I'm not quite sure how much it costs. But that's what I've got going on for you guys for Tuesday. Yep. Um, and ASAP Wait, is not Tuesday. here. Monday. Monday. It's Monday. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's yeah. Monday. And um, speaking of, like, you know, you're, you're talking about jazz and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Badlander is no longer doing their jazz nights. Oh, how come? Yeah. I mean, really? I don't know. Like, I, I, a lot of my friends on Facebook who are music, musicians around are very disappointed that this kind of thing yeah. happened. But, you know, it's just like one of those things that uh, towards the end, towards the last like year or so, it started just kind of fizzling out. That's what I would think is that, because I've been there before, but it was never really that popular, that yeah. packed. When I was in college, it was like super popular. A lot of people were really into it, mm -hmm. but it just kind of like up and stopped. But apparently uh, it's over. That's like, too bad. Yeah. That's really sad. Oh, we should have gone and supported it. Mm -hmm. The, thing, oh, well. the, the last time I went was uh, during Labor Day weekend because yeah. Labor Day Monday off and everything. Woo. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have an art clip for you guys. Oh, nice. um, it is from the uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. We're, we'll be showing this for uh, quite a while <laughs> <laughs> and until we get some new art clips. But of course, our very own Rick Phillips will be giving us a whole bunch of new art, which uh, there's a bunch of new art installations all across Missoula mm -hmm. that just started just this last Friday. I suggest you guys check it out. But of course, if you guys want to go to the Fort Missoula, they have a nice little museum in which they are highlighting old pictures and old, um, I guess, architectural sketches of the mercantile um, before it's inevitable de demolition. I yeah. don't know. It might just yeah. be forgotten, just left there for another 10 years. I know. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I'm laughing. It's a serious issue. But anyways, <laughs> here is an art clip, and when we come back, we'll have the rest of your events, and then we'll have your uh, wake-up sports.
Hello, everyone. We are back. And now this is what's going on on Tuesday, not on Monday. Okay, so on the northeast corner, McLeod and Higgins, they've got their Tuesday morning meditation that starts at 8 a.m. It goes until 8.50 every Tuesday morning. We have open hours in the makerspace at the public library starting at 10 a.m. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. Uh, at the Missoula Public Library, they also have Big Read, Big Read themed uh, Tiny Tales. It starts at 10.30. And so uh, it's pretty much like stories and rhymes and they engage in fun activities. It's in the large meeting room and the Big Read has themes with families and um, out in the Wild West. There's Beanbag Toss at the Children, Children's Museum of Missoula at 11. And then in the Alps boardroom in the Florence building, they've got Shooting the Bull Toastmasters. This is a lively Toastmasters club to improve your public speaking, increase your confidence, and grow your vocabulary. At Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got a lasagna cupcakes workshop for ages 4 to 8. Uh, it starts at 4 o'clock. It's only $20. And then at 5 o'clock at McCormick Park is Fulf in the Park. Um, they set up a 9 to 12 hole disc golf course in a different park each week. And so this week is McCormick. At the Public Library, there's a community creative writing workshop in their makerspace that starts at 6 o'clock. It's a drop-in environment. And at the Zootown Arts Community Center, there is a collaborative parade prop building. So this is they're gearing up for the Day of the Dead Festival at the end of October. Uh, I believe it's November 1st. And so the Zach will be creating large paper mache heads. Um, and so they're going to you know, need some help for that. So you guys can go on down there and help them create these paper mache heads. At Five Valleys Midwives Collective, they've got Mama to Be Yoga that starts at 6 o'clock. Um, it's only $11 to drop in, and you can, you know, get your yoga on and connect with some other moms. So they are located at, if you guys will look at the bottom of the screen, 615 Oak Street, number 101, if you guys want to check that out. There is Knitting 101 at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6 o'clock. If you guys want to join that, you can call 549-8765 for that one. They also have Creative Doll Making. That's at 6 o'clock. That's going to be at the Helgate Elementary School. Um, and it's from 6 to 9. It's only $34. So again, if you guys want to join that, you can call 549-8765 up at the top of the screen. Uh, and then there's also an Introduction to WordPress class. 6 o'clock at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. You guys can call that with same website, or same phone number, not website. <laughs> but the Introduction to WordPress class will give you introductions to a website, and you can make your own website. Um, and then another class put on by the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is more stamping and card making. It starts at 6 o'clock. And that's going to be on Tuesdays, starting from the 11th, goes until the 18th, so maybe only two classes. At uh, the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. It's going to be Indian Fall Comfort Foods. It starts at 6.30. It's $35. And Theo Smith, which is the chef and owner of Masala, will be there to give them a bunch of awesome recipes. They'll be making steamed dumplings, uh, spiced potato patties, red bean and tomato curry, lamb curry, and then some masala chai. At the Public Library, they've got their second Tuesday book group at 7 o'clock. They're discussing Love Medicine in the Boardroom at 7. And then there's an African dance class at the Missoula Senior Center, also at 7 o'clock, with uh, Taryn Reem. She is the uh, hostess of this. So it's $10 per class and $35 for four classes. And then we have Rocky Mountaineering's meeting. This will be at the trailhead at 7. Uh, Jim Ulrich will present a slideshow and presentation of Denali in the Days of Cotton and Wool. Uh, he submitted Denali on July 5th, 1976. Um, and so he's going to be talking about how it's a lot different now and how it was back then. And then my last event is a comedy open mic that's going to be at Stage 112 at 8 o'clock. Sign up starts at 7.30 and the show starts at 8 o'clock. So as always, you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net or the University of Montana website, as well as the Independent and the Missoulian for more events in your community. Yes, and of course, uh, the comedy night, interesting. Yeah. It's, the trends of comedy in Missoula are starting to really um, grow like crazy. And, they really uh, are. What, what is the inevitable end of bluegrass? <laughs> <laughs> it's now comedy. It's now yeah. comedy. It's, it, it's so weird. Like, Missoula has, like, it's a like, oh, cool trend. It's like, it's so original. It's Missoula's like, no, we just copy other people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, comedy is really starting to become really strong here in Missoula. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it has lots of open mic nights yeah. of comedy, and the union, of course, holds one every Thursday. Mm -hmm. And not every Thursday, once a month. Once every month. Yep. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you guys know. But of course, <laughs> uh, I have another uh, PSA for you guys, and when we come back, we'll have uh, Wake Up Sports, and this PSA is about voter registration, of course, in today's uh, uh, landscape. Comedy and uh, elections are very one and the same, if you really think about it. So, without further ado, here is, uh, nope. Oh. There we go. That's the one I wanted to show. <laughs> okay, so uh, here is um, how to uh, get registered to vote and all sorts of things that you should know through the uh, MissoulaVotes.com. Hi, I'm Kate. Are you new to Missoula County or curious if you're election ready? Well, you're in luck. My voter page is the Secretary of State's voter access portal where you can find anything and everything you need to know about your election status. To get there, visit myvoterpagemt.com. My voter page will inform you if your information is current with our office. Double check your residential status, your mailing address, and more. This will save you from any issues on election day. You will know if you're an absentee voter by seeing important notice at the top of the screen. You can even track the status of your absentee ballot through the mailing and voting process. If you do not identify as an absentee voter, you will see information on the location of your polling place, directions, and other important information for Election Day. Be sure to check out my voter page well before November 8th to make sure you're election ready. Good morning, everybody. I'm Captain Cross. I'm Cole Johnson. And this is your weekly Spartan Live football update here on MCAT on Wake Up Missoula. Sentinel escapes with a 36-35 overtime win at Great Falls this past Friday. Mitch Roberts to Ethan Jones was the magic combination, both, uh, well, in overtime. A uh, four-yard touchdown pass and then the winning two-point conversion on a jump pass from Mitch Roberts to to the tight end, Ethan Jones. Mitch Roberts finishes up 19 of 25 for 206 passing yards, three touchdowns through the air, one on the ground as a rushing touchdown. He also had an interception. Roberts' passing touchdowns went to Ethan Jones, two of them. Connor Crawford caught one. And then the other Sentinel score was a Caden Messer rushing touchdown. Uh, Great Falls, give them credit. They tied the game at 28 on their home field uh, with 17 seconds left in the fourth quarter to force overtime. Um, the Bison, six losses this year. They're one and six now. Four by a field goal or less, and three of them by one point. Uh, second week in a row that Sentinel's gone to overtime and the game has been decided by a single point. This time they went home a lot happier uh, with a four and three record. And uh, your initial reaction to this final score goal was redemption. Yeah, it was a redemption game because last week they lost in overtime and they lost by one point. And this time they won in overtime by one point. Um, big play at the end of the game, really. I mean, big call by Dane Oliver going for the win. You know, you're down by one. You lost last week by one. It's like, let's try and win this now. You get the jump pass to Ethan Jones and it works out and they pull it out by one point. Um, this team is making a lot of strides. Um, they're, you know, making some steps forward in terms of winning closer games. They have lost a couple games. Um, they've been involved in four games that are decided by six points or less. Um, they lost, um, to Glacier by one point, they lost to Big Sky by six. But you look at Sentinel right now, um, they're playing very well in terms of offensive um, capabilities too. They're moving the ball downfield, Connor Crawford is running the football well, and Mitch Roberts is making plays. I mean, he had three touchdown passes in this game, um, and he's just he's getting the ball to everybody as well. So you look at this team right now, they're on the brink of the playoffs. Um, they're going to make the playoffs when the season is over, I believe. And they're just able to build on a lot of momentum uh, for this year and years to come. Um, you know, this team, I mean, Dane Oliver, this is the fourth year that he's been involved with this team. He's coached him. Um, he's doing a great job of building a program. Um, are they going to win the state championship this year? Uh, no, <laughs> they're not at that point yet. But they will, um, you know, in years to come, they will make a push for it. I really do believe that. Um, they're getting better year in and year out, and they're winning more close games. And we talked about how important it is to finish uh, close games, and they were able to finish a game like this at Great Balls. 
it was a game that they definitely, you know, they could have lost, could have gotten upset, but they were still able to pull it out. It's a big deal to win on the road. They have three road wins this year. They only had one last year. It was kind of a weekend of upsets, so kind of any given Friday type mentality. Billing Senior now 7-0, and though. They made a statement win over Bozeman 43-9 to on their home field. Kalispell Glacier, one of those upset losses to CMR, who's now 3-4. and four. Kalispell Glacier, 6-1, and one, still up there at uh, second or third. Billings West, 6-1, and one, uh, 41-21 win over Crosstown rival Skyview as the Falcons continue to struggle with turnovers this season. Bozeman, 5-2 and two after the loss to Billings Senior. Helena, 4-3 and three after a loss to Crosstown rival Capital, 3 to nothing. So Capital's defense keeping them on the outside or uh, on the bubble of the playoff picture. Missoula Big Sky, Missoula Sentinel, both four and three. Uh, Big Sky finishes up versus Skyview at Capital at Glacier. And after a Missoula Hellgate forfeit was their Friday result, uh, they take a win from that. Missoula Sentinel um, finishes up at Billings West, which we'll talk about in a second. Then they get the Hellgate, Hellgate forfeit. Then they play Kalispell Flathead, who is one of three teams that have a three and four record. Flathead looking to make a playoff push at Capital versus Glacier and then at Sentinel to finish it up. A 14-7 win at Butte helps their cause as they try to make a push down the stretch. Um, Great Falls CMR, Helena Capital, both 3-4 and four now. Uh, Missoula Sentinel, yeah, at Billings West is going to be a tough game because Billings West has shown that they're one of the best teams in the state. Missoula Sentinel trying to kind of solidify itself in the playoff picture. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a real tough game. Uh, you know, six-hour bus ride to play in one of the best teams in the state of Montana. They only have one loss on the year. Bryson Deming, he had three touchdown passes in the first quarter in their last game. They won 38-7, to I think it was. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a tough one for sure. Um, you have to execute in all phases of the game. When you get turnovers, you have to take advantage of the turnovers. Uh, you know, we saw Sentinel get three turnovers in the first half against Billing Senior, and they weren't really able to do anything with them. So, I mean, if you get turnovers, you need to turn the turnovers into points. And that's the way Sentinel is going to win this football game. And then they also have to take care of the ball themselves. They might have a shot to take it. Um, but it's going to be a tough one for sure. And Billings West is one of those teams where I see them maybe making that two seed and Glacier dropping down, potentially maybe the three or the four. I mean, Glacier's defense is not in a good place right now. Um, they're giving up a lot of points. Um, they lost a game at home to, at C to CMR, which I didn't think that they were going to lose. So you look at Glacier, I feel like they're dropping down a little bit. But Billings West is that solid number two. Um, it's going to be a tough game for Sentinel for sure. But Sentinel has the forfeit win against Hellgate the week after that. They got uh, Flathead High uh, for the last home game. Uh, I believe they're going to win that and they're going to make the playoffs. So again, go on the road, um, you know, try to build some momentum. Um, you know, learn from your mistakes and, you know, try to compete in this game. But yeah, I see Billings West definitely coming out on top in this one. Um, but Sentinel, again, like I mentioned before, uh, making some huge strides, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And Dane Oliver, I give him a lot of credit. Like, he has his team ready to go. Um, he's ready to pull the trigger on some plays where you don't expect him to pull the trigger on, and he's been able to execute some big-time plays in late in games. And it's been paying dividends because they've been winning um, some of those games late. Missoula Sentinel, one of those teams that's very close to even being 6-1. and one. They had their shot against Billing Senior, like you mentioned, had a few opportunities they didn't take, quite take advantage of in the first half to possibly give Senior a scare. So they can play with pretty much anybody in the state of Montana, trying to go on the road with a tough game at Billings West. And then our season finale is October 28th, um, again, with Flathead coming in to take on Missoula Sentinel. But we won't get ahead of ourselves. That's this week on uh, Wake Up Missoula, your Spartan Live football update on MCAT. I'm Kenson Cross. I'm Cole Johnson. And we thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Kate. What are you doing Tuesday, November 1st? Do you know that you can vote early in the state of Montana? That's right. Come to the University Center Atrium between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Tuesday, November 1st to update your personal information, receive a ballot, and even cast your vote. This event is open to all eligible voters in Missoula County, not just students. If you're an absentee voter, you can also return your ballot to the elections office at the event that day. Have you changed your last name, moved, or had any other changes to your personal information? If so, you'll need to update this information with the elections office in order to be eligible to vote in the 2016 general election. This event will help you skip the long wait times we anticipate on Tuesday, November 8th. Also be sure to log on to my voter page at myvoterpagemt.com to check your voter registration status. If it says you're an inactive voter or have outdated information, stop by and update that information during the event. 
Make sure you're election ready and come hang out with us on November 1st. Hey, we're back. And of course, uh, last night was our Dude in 72 competition. Nice. And of course, the winner was Bat Honey, which is a local puppet theater group, mm. which uh, is, I guess, uh, the best way, best tagline for them is like a puppet show for adults. Nice. And it yeah. was pretty interesting because their video was like extremely short. It was like 30, 40 seconds long. Oh, really? But it was really well done and it won. Oh, that's cool. Yes. That's awesome. It was so interesting to watch because it's like, how do they get like a brick, like alleyway look to it? Because it looks so realistic. And then I think they did a really good when job. When will we be able to view that on Wake Up Missoula? Um, sometime soon. I don't. I just don't have the footage on me right now, and I didn't get a chance to uh, show any of that <laughs> stuff. So I'll, I'll I'll try to get it for Wednesday show because uh, we don't have any um, city council this tonight. Yeah. But of course, for some reason, I have Bonner Community Council. And I don't know if they, they I guess they don't recognize uh, this as a federal holiday. They don't. Yeah. Uh, Bonner does, Bonner's on its own time. Yeah. They're on their own rules But also there. Bonner is at a really uh, um, impasse right now. They're um, trying to build a trail that connects to the uh, Tiger Grant Trail, which mm -hmm. uh, is like Hamilton to Missoula. And it's like even like, it started in Hamilton, but then it got past Hamilton like into to Darby, and then it's all over the place. And it's gonna be like one big, huge trail that's going through. And Bonner wants to definitely capitalize on that, but they have limited time to um. do so because they're applying for a grant. And they, uh, Bonner, uh, usually when they talk about how much money they have in their bank, it's usually about $1,000. <laughs> yes, it's a four digit account. Good old Bonner. <laughs> they're on their own rules out there. They're fun. Oh, yeah, but they're doing great. They're, they're yeah. in the upswing of things. Um, they're working on getting a uh, sewer system put in, which much too many people who live in Bonner's uh, d dismay because a lot of them like the septic tank, <laughs> which is not bad if you really think about it because if you're hooked up to a sewer, you have to pay fees for a mm -hmm. sewer. And it's yes, like money that you have to pay every month. And it's like, oh, it's just another bill. And I totally, uh, un uh, I totally understand that. <laughs> and I totally, totally understand that. But, of course, uh, um, I do want to emphasize uh, more about MCAT on MCAT's um, YouTube page. I'm actually going to show you the kind of like the YouTube page and all that stuff. So if you guys take a look at MCAT's YouTube page, um, this is like one of the videos I'm going to show. But of course, to find out all our wonderful, we just uh, passed 2,000 videos on our YouTube wow. page. Just so many videos, so many great things on here. We have a discussion with John Krakauer when he came to Missoula. That's still online as well. That's up to 28,000 views. Wow. It's one of the more popular videos. We got PSA I just showed you, which uh, is only four views, so <laughs> <laughs> which is just great. But of course, we have a Voices for Justice rally, and of course, this is, um, they're talking about the Black Lives Matter movement, but of course, in Missoula, a lot of people come up and spoke about how Native lives matter and how a lot of different um, lives matter as well, because it's not just a, uh, a like a one group thing, and it's not about dividing groups, it's about bringing groups together. And here is a little taste of that. And you can watch it online on MCAT television. Uh, wait, I was going to say MCAT TV, but then I said television. Television. So you, you, have to, you have to write it like that, television. So it's like <laughs> T, capital E, capital a L. It's like... TL, I think there's an A yeah. in there. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, here's a little taste of this. Um, I'll show you just a little bit. Here it is. So welcome again. Like I said before, I'm the president of the Black Student Union at the University of Montana. But a little bit of history first, okay? We have the oldest Black Student Union in the nation. I know Cal started in 1968. Yep, that's true. We do. I know Cal started in 1968, ours began in 1967, okay? We have the third oldest African American studies program in the, in the nation, Dr. Ulysses S. Doss, friend of Martin Luther King, freedom fighter, civil rights icon. After his friend was murdered in Memphis, obviously there was some vicarious trauma experience with that. He needed to get out of the South. He came to little old Missoula, Montana, because he had a couple of friends who were with him, a couple of lawyers who were also involved in the civil rights movement, to get away from the South, because it was just too violent at the time, and it continues to be too violent. All right, so that's, um, I just kind of want to show you a little taste of that, and uh, there is definitely a lot going on as well, 
And unfortunately, that's for cool. me, I didn't know those things mm -hmm. that we were the oldest black student group and that we third yeah. oldest. That's awesome. Yeah, for, I didn't uh, know for that. a city that's uh, very uh, yeah. populated by a lot of honkies out there. That's um, really great. We well, have good. A great, a strong union. I uh, did a, a, a shoot for them not too long ago. Um, I don't know why I say them. <laughs> <laughs> that's just terrible. Uh, of course, it makes it worse that I'm pointing it out. Them. It does. I it didn't, does. It really I does. didn't like, see no, that as weird, Scott. I thought that you were talking about them, the group. Group. The, student, their group. the Black and Student it, Union group. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Is it their group? <laughs> Them. Uh, I should stop talking. But of course, uh, I think that um, in, in my personal opinion, there's there's be a, lot of, a lot of lines being drawn, and there's a lot of um, overinflation and a lot of different things that a lot of people are bringing into uh, light. It's just like, oh, you got to overinflate the controversy between people. You got to make it more um, controversial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's very interesting. It's a it's lines that haven't been really been drawn in the last uh, many years. It's it's very interesting mm -hmm. to see how this is developing and how things are kind of, uh, uh, and how some people are kind of even frustrated with this whole uh, lines that are being drawn between people, and which yeah. everyone should be finding a way to come together. <laughs> Uh, they true. should highlight that instead of highlight the negativity. That's very course, true. That's uh, just the Those state that we live in nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to kind of end on that note. Um, uh, it was a very thick um, Monday episode of Wake Up Missoula. It was, yeah. yes. Yeah, so we definitely miss Daysaf, so he will be back Wednesday to play all of our groovy tunes for us and give us insight on those old musicians from the past. And I'll have an update on what's going on with Bonner because there's a lot going on. you got to watch out because they're going to come up and they're going to be got a lot more in it. It, it, ah. I honestly think that Bonner has a chance to be a lot more in innovative than Missoula. I it's, agree. It's so... it's. In the upswing, it, it's agree. coming. It's coming out of nowhere. A lot of people are moving into Bonner. A lot of businesses is re revitalizing. They even have uh, their own brewing company that's coming there. Like Kettle House is going to make a, like a huge Kettle House is already there. It's already there, mm -hmm. but they're making like a, a like a huge distillery, kind of like that rivals Big Sky Brewing Company. Cool. That's Very that's neat. the plan. Very neat. But of yes. course, uh, if you want to find more, more information, you can log on to our, our website, uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You guys can like us on our Facebook page. And to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. Orientation is this Wednesday at 530. If you're interested in being a part of MCAT or even being on our show to talk about your upcoming event, rally, or cause, you can call us at 542 Two two eight, otherwise known as five four two. MCAT. You can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org if you're so scared. It's true. Yeah. Yes. But it's Monday and so uh, tomorrow's Tuesday and then I think Wednesday comes after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. if you're in Wake Up Missoula time, it's it's Monday and then it's Wednesday and then it's Friday. It's true. And then there's nothing. And, and then, then there's, there's nothingness nothing. for a little while and then we come back for Monday <laughs> and it's it's just like that. And of course, I have to get our uh, in the can music just ready for Generic our music. end yes. of the show. So uh, as always, I'm Scott Ramp. And as always, my name is Noel McFoy, and uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. And thanks for joining us on Wake Up Missoula. <laughs>